Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in this channel. Today, we're gonna continue with topology, so let's get to it. Now, um, by the way, just to give you a heads up, I've already closed the submissions for the uh, first portfolio review. We've been receiving some very, very cool stuff, guys. Some of you are de uh, delivering or submitting some really, really finished work, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. We're gonna be analyzing them. I'm gonna be using some tips and tricks on how to improve them, and uh, we're gonna be opening this every now and then, so just make sure that you keep tuning into our channel so that you know when the next uh, submission is gonna come into into place so that you can submit your work and I'll gladly help you. Now, uh, just started we talked about uh, topology. It was a really cool, um, I'm just noticing that we have a very weird shadow. See that? I'm gonna have to <laughs> redo the light because uh, if I just move a little bit that we get like this weird shadow, I don't like it. I will change that later. So uh, yesterday we talked about the importance of uh, topology and today I wanna talk about uh, one of my arc nemesis in the 3D world. And I call this guys my arc nemesis because there's a lot of uh, students that are really eager to learn 3D and they go online and they start looking at people that show them how to do certain kind of things. And sometimes it's just not the proper way to do it. And what I'm talking about is of course, a booleans. So booleans are one of those things that everyone learns very, very fast, or very, very quick in the, in the 3D world because of, with booleans, you're able to create shapes that look like they are working and they look like the shape that you're trying to model. However, the problem with booleans is that they're gonna give you something that's super, super crappy topology. So uh, booleans are usually not that good. And the reason why they're not good is because as I'm mentioning here, the topology is just really, really bad. Now, that does not mean that booleans are our uh, our enemies because there's actually ways, and I'm gonna show you here in ZBrush, uh, one way in which we can actually utilize a booleans to our advantage to create some very nice shapes. Now, uh, the most important thing that you need to understand about booleans is that they will give you the shapes that you're going for, uh, but unfortunately, those shapes are or might not be exactly the shapes that you wanna use in a game or in subdivision modeling. And the main reason is when you use a boolean, as you saw with the previous example, what's gonna happen is you are gonna subtract, as you can see here, one object from the other one. And yes, you'll get this very, very nice effect, but unfortunately this is non-workable geometry. Like this geometry is not something that you're gonna be able to use anywhere uh, unless you just wanna like, 3D print this thing and you're just gonna triangulate and that's it. Like if this is the shape that you wanna 3D print, then go for it. Like this is perfectly fine, it's perfectly workable. However, if you wanna use this for games or if you wanna use this for subdivision modeling, as you can see when I subdivide, we get this super, super ugly element. So some of you might be wondering, well, does that mean that booleans are bad for us? And the answer is no, they, they can actually be very good, but you need to know how to properly do them, okay? So I'm gonna show you here an example. This is a something that I teach my students in, in my first like a modeling classes when we have like a, uh, just like an average thing. And we're gonna be doing uh, very quickly a uh, like um, like a revolver barrel. So everyone has seen the revolvers like magazine, revolver um, magazine. And it's this sort of uh, a round shape, right? So whoop, revolver chamber, is that it? There we go. So this sort of thing, right? So we have six holes throughout the thing. And then we have this very nice, like uh, smooth things. Everyone, there's a lot of people out there that have been doing uh, tutorials showing you how to how to model guns and stuff. We're probably going to do a, a, a modeling a gun tutorial later on. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to show you how to do this real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this guy right here. I'm going to save this image. I'm just going to place it on my, uh, let's go next to live. We already have our project, so why not? So let's very quickly go here into next to live. And in our source images, I'll just save this right there. And then here, I'm gonna go to my front view and I'm gonna say uh, view image plane, import image. Uh, we need to set the project, of course. So next to live, there we go, set. And from our source images, we're just gonna grab uh, this one right here. There we go. So this is the shape that we want to create, right? Now, the first thing that you need to understand is we could uh, save ourselves a lot of work by um, doing this in a sort of a mirror way, right? So if we were to create, uh, think of it like a pizza. So if we were to create like a, like a section of the pizza right here, uh, it would be very easy to just duplicate around. So we don't need to do the whole thing. We can just focus on one of the, of the elements. So I'm gonna start with a cylinder here. It's gonna make a very big cylinder. Rotate this 90 degrees. Remember we have, uh, I've mentioned this before. If you press E and click, you're gonna go into the options for the rotation tool and you can go into this discrete rotate and that's gonna rotate in angles. So it's easier to just go into 90 degrees so that you don't have to type it in every single time. So I'm just gonna make this uh, this way. So a lot of people will say, well, you have the basics, that's perfect. Now let's just create another cylinder, which is gonna be the hole for the element. 
again, 90 degrees. And we're just gonna like modify this. Oh, let's do 90 degrees. And we will just like modify this so that it fits right there. And some, some schools, uh, some like people teach uh, students to just go and do a, like a Boolean here. That wouldn't be my recommendation. I would first suggest to lower this to eight sides because it's, it's a little bit easier to work with than uh, 20. Uh, and then select this guy and this guy. And now I'm gonna do a, um, a mesh Booleans difference. So what this will do, as you can see, it just created this hole, uh, which is gonna be the basic of this like uh, pizza shape that we have here, which is what I want uh, ready to, to, to work, right? The problem is the topology sucks. And if I try to do a, a smooth subdivision, it's not gonna work. But here I'm gonna show you how you can actually use a Booleans to subdivide this in a better way. So I'm gonna grab uh, this guy right here and I'm actually gonna grab the whole edge loop on both sides. like this, there we go. And by grabbing both edge loops, I'm gonna uh, do a, a bevel. And, or actually, sorry, sorry, before that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna go to the side view. I'm gonna create one cut tool right down the middle and then delete half of it. Why? Because it's easier to just work on one half and then uh, fix the other one. And I'm gonna fix the topology. I, 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 was, um, I, I'm, I was wrong in trying to, to do this uh, with the bevel first. We first fix the topology. And we already know, we saw that yesterday, that we need to have triangles and squares. As long as we have triangles and squares, then everything's gonna be flowing in a, in a better way. So right now we have this point right here, though it's not exactly where I want it to be. So if I go into points and I just snap this up here, and grab this guy and snap it up here, you can see that we pretty much fix the issue up here because we can just grab these two guys, combine them, grab these two guys, combine them, and then the topology is flowing in, a, in, a, in an even better way. We can do the same thing here. So B, go there, here, go there, grab those two guys, merge, these two guys, and merge. And now, again, we solve the topology in here, which not perfect because we have this uh, triangles and triangles are uh, finicky, uh, but better. Uh, now, I'm gonna go to the front view actually, and I'm gonna delete all of the other faces here, because these are four faces. And I know that if I grab these four faces and multiply them five times, I'm gonna get the whole uh, circle. So I'm actually gonna just work on this four faces right now, which again is it's another one of those things that you need to take into account to make sure that uh, you understand how topology flows because we don't wanna do any extra work. Now I'm gonna grab my cut tool. I'm gonna go from this corner to the border right here. And I'm gonna go from this corner to the border right here. So what I'm doing there is I'm creating a new edge flow, a new edge loop that I'm gonna be able to just move like this way. For instance, here, I'm also gonna go like to the side like this. And then from here, I'm gonna go to the side like this, okay? And that's gonna give me, as you can see, squares pretty much everywhere. And I can actually delete this guy right now, this edge loop, and we're gonna get square, 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 and then a couple of angons. Now those angons, I'm not really worried about because I'm gonna be fixing them. And the easiest way to fix them is to create another little uh, like edge loop going to the corner right here. There we go. Oh, so from here to here, because we, we do not want to modify the uh, curvature of the, of the outer edge. So something like this. And now if we were to smooth this out, as you can see that the smoothing works a lot, lot better. Here's where I'm gonna do the bevel now because it's gonna be easier to just grab this whole thing, do a small bevel, a small fraction. Let's do two segments and there we go. So we have this, uh, initial part of the gun. Now to uh, properly uh, duplicate this thing around, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna um, grab this guy, move it around. And if I move it like this, you can see that we're gonna get uh, this sort of effect. However, it's not, it's actually not giving me the exact measurement that I was going for. So let's try a different approach. I think we're gonna have to get rid of uh, discrete rotate and the rotation is gonna be uh, about 60 degrees, yeah, I think 60 degrees. So there we go, oh, 60. So if we do 60 degrees, you can see here, oh, let me uh, bring this back. Uh, we're gonna find this, this exact uh, point. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab all of this vertex and I'm gonna snap them uh, to world or to, yeah, to world, because I think we're, we're not exactly oriented the way we should. Oh, give me just one second. Oop. Not this one, this one, let's erase that one. So this guys, the thing that I wanna keep the most consistent is the upper part, so there we go. So I'm gonna go there, and then I'm gonna bring this thing back to zero. 
because this is the proper thickness that I need. So I use that rotation to find the proper thickness. And then I'm going to mirror this thing on the positive x. Sorry if this is a little bit confusing. Kind of like freestyling <laughs> right here. Uh, so yeah, there we go. And now we press number three. As you can see, the topology works a lot better. And now, since the, the proper segment is working here, I should be able to just duplicate this thing, rotate it 60 degrees, like here, and we'll get this. And we can do the same thing, just add more 60 more degrees, so 120, uh, add more. If you're bad at math, you can also use an operation here, and it should give you, hey, yeah, so 120 plus 60, that's not giving it, that's weird. I tried it earlier and it worked. Or was that Blender? I think it was Blender. I think Blender has the math <laughs> on the elements here. So 60, no, no, sorry, it's 120, there we go. And then this one would be uh, 240. And then finally it would be uh, 300. There we go. So now we can grab all of them, all of the pieces, combine them into a single uh, object, and then go into vertex, grab all of the vertex and say uh, mesh, or edit mesh, merge. And all of the vertices that are in the, in the same place will merge together. And as you can see, we're going to get these very nice chambers. Now, of course, we have the issue with the upper part where this thing is not, uh, this thing is not working properly, as you can see. Uh, but we're going to fix that. So now that we know that this is going to work, uh, we need to find uh, this thing right here, right? We need to do the little uh, hole. And we're going to be using another Boolean to do so. And this Boolean is going to be a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is I am first gonna grab the whole object and do a mirror to C, C negative. So like this, hit apply, there we go. So we have the other side of the of the barrel. And then I am gonna go to the front view, grab this guy, and I believe we need to rotate this uh, about 30 degrees. So I'm gonna say 30 degrees, so that we can see now that line right there, which is what we're gonna be lining everything with. We're gonna grab this guy, of course, and we're gonna center the pivot point. And we're gonna rotate this thing, uh, 30 degrees as, as well in C so that the holes are aligned with everything else. Now, uh, I know from uh, the times I've done this exercise that this uh, like cut right here does not go all the way through. So I'm going to start with a cylinder. I'm also going to make the cylinder eight sides here real quick. And uh, we're going to do uh, subdivision heights, subdivision cap, sorry, I'm going to say three. And then round cap, I'm going to set on and that's going to give me this sort of like a pill. So now I'm going to rotate this pill so that's 90 degrees facing me. We're going to go for uh, front view and we're going to scale this so that we create the hole or the circumference circumference of the hole that we need, which is about there, yeah, about there. There we go. And now the only thing I need to do is I need to grab all of this front vertices and push them uh, forward so that this shape is going to cut into this shape. So we grab this guy, this guy, mesh, booleans and difference. And as you can see, we do get the cut that we're looking for, uh, but it's not uh, how we want this to be. Now, the cool thing is, again, we don't need to worry about all of the other cuts because eventually what we're going to do is we have already this sort of like pizza slide or slice. So if we grab like this half right here, this sort of like triangular shape, and we just eventually mirror it back, this is like a, like a T shape. go and this guy there we go so if we mirror this thing like several times we're going to get the exact uh, thing that we're looking for so it's easier to just fix this area than to fix the other uh, parts so remember the weird triangle that we had before now it's very easy because we're just going to use this point right here and this point right here i'm using a v snap to point to snap it to the specific point we're going to merge together and merge together and as you can see that thing is going to get solved right there now over here we still have a couple of uh issues like this guy right here uh, and this guy right here. Now, in this case, I would say it's a little bit easier to um, just snap it here in the center, like this and like this, and then just grab those two guys and snap them together. And that way we're gonna get a nice, like sharp angle right there. Now on this side, you can see that there's a lot of lines as, as well that are having a, a little bit of an issue. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna find where these vertices can just like point to each other like this. Like those two guys are very easy to solve because we just, merge them together and that makes a nice square flow. Then from this side, it's very easy. We just grab this guy right here and we just snap it to the side like this. And then we just grab this guy right here and we snap it to the side like this. Very important that we grab uh, this edges or this new edge that we just created and with the R key, 
we snap it together so it's perfectly flat. And we're going to do the same thing here, from here to the side and from here to the side, like this. We grab the whole thing here, here, R to, to scale it, and there we go. Now, for this area, you can see that we still get some like weird elements. All of those guys, I'm just going to merge to center so we can create a, a nice triangle. You can see a little one right there, also merge to center to clean it up. And then we have this remaining two ones. Uh, and in this case, I think it's going to be easier to uh, just probably just have another set of triangles. So I'm going to go from this border to this border right here. And from this border to this border right here. There we go. So now we press number three. We have this very nice effect. Now, this line and this front line, we're going to bevel. Actually, I'm actually going to bevel this whole line as well. And that bevel is going to help me hold the edge uh, a little bit better. Careful here. You can see that we have a little bit of an issue. I forgot to go from here to here. You can see that we get a very weird line right there. That's fine. We just snap it and it's going to be perfectly fine. We go here again. So double click, double click, double click, double click. And then all of these borders. And then on this side, we grab this border as well. And we bevel. Small fraction, two segments to keep it round. And as you can see, this is going to hold very, very nicely. We do have a couple of like... Um, uh, pinches right here. So there's there's a lot of ways in which we can actually fix them. Uh, one of them would be to actually like add another edge loop. We could also modify this edge instead of having it go to that corner. We could add it's a little bit more not, not super advanced, but just a little bit more advanced. We could add another edge loop like really close in here like this. And then have the same one like over here. Oop. There we go. Now this guy, because I, I want to keep them symmetrical with R key. I'm just going to snap them. There we go. And then I'm going to go from here to here, 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 and then here. And that way, what we're going to be doing here is we're actually going to be creating a, like, like we are going to create a little like pinch, but instead of having it go all the way over there, we're going to keep it really, really close here. Oop. So we're going to go from here to here. And and then we're going to move this guy, as you can see, to the side like this. So we're, we're moving the topology. And then this guy, snap it right here. So those two guys merge together. And actually, this thing is asymmetrical as well. So we could just delete half of it. There we go. And you can see we're going to get that sort of... Uh, Topology there, which is a square, but it's flowing a little bit better than what we had uh, over here, which was like a weird pinch. You can see the pinch still there. Again, one way in which we can relax a little bit. Uh, remember that the further away points are from each other, the the smoother they're gonna be. So by moving the the points away, you're gonna see that the that the pinch gets uh, reduced quite a bit. So now we can just do this uh, mirror to the uh, x uh, positive. There we go, and we have our shape. And finally, I'm just going to use Duplicate Special, which is a very nice tool here inside of uh, inside of Maya. Uh, and Duplicate Special will, um, as you can imagine, duplicate this in a special way. So I'm going to go here, Duplicate Special, and I'm going to do a rotation, which is going to be uh, 60 degrees to rotation. So 60 on the uh, Y axis, and I want five copies because I already have the first one. Hit Apply. And uh, no, sorry, it's in the C axis. So 60 degrees on the C-axis, which is the last channel, and we hit apply, boom, there we go. So it's just a matter of grabbing everything here, going into Edit Mesh, Combiner, sorry, Mesh, Combine, Edit Mesh, and a Merge. And as you can see, we get this very nice uh, element where we use Booleans, because again, Booleans are not our enemies. It's just a matter of knowing how to properly use them. And you don't have to go super, super dense, as you can see here. Like this is a very nice topology, very, very low amount of topology. And uh, you can texture this, you can UV this, and it's it's perfectly workable for games or for, um, well, for games it might be a little bit high, but for cinematics, it's, it's perfectly fine. So that's it for today, guys. Now I know that I opened ZBrush and I was gonna show you something, but I think we're gonna be running out of time. So we're gonna be taking a look at this uh, tomorrow on tomorrow's video and I'm going to do the exact same thing 
but in Zbrush. And I'm sure you're going to see how easier it is. However, you're also going to see the difference in regards to topology. Okay, so hang on tight and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.